Hey guys, are you tired of keeping up with all the changes in Microsoft 365? Stay tuned because each month I spend hours sifting through all the announcements to bring you all the feature updates, changes, and enhancements that you don't want to miss. So let's go ahead and get kicked off here, starting off with Microsoft Teams. So that being here, guys, just a quick reminder, I do supplement these videos with a blog post down below. So be sure to check that out after you watch this video. Diving in here, though, we're going to start off with Microsoft Teams, as we usually do. This first one's related to a countdown timer in Teams meetings. You can see that here in the screenshot. This is something that you can put in if you have a scheduled meeting, and it's allowing participants to set up to 100 minutes on the timer with visual and audio alerts. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this one yet. Certainly could help maybe in keeping you on track with getting the goals accomplished throughout the meeting, but it does seem a little bit aggressive to have in the meetings. Timelines on this one is late September, be complete by late October. Next one here is new organizer controls for in-meeting management. This is basically taking what is nested today in meeting settings through a pop-up window and effectively putting in all of your security controls in this new button that you see here in the screenshot. I'm in Teams preview, so I'm already seeing this today. But this does allow you to quickly change the security settings of the meeting that you can see there. And if you have Teams Premium, you'll be able to set the setting of prevent copy of chat option as well. It's up on September 15th and expect to be complete by September 30th. Hey guys, if you're looking to save hours performing Microsoft 365 security assessments and have client facing reporting at your fingertips in under 60 seconds, check out a tool that I built called Cloud Capsule, which allows you to automate Microsoft 365 assessments, and we mapped over 150 data points and baseline standards such as CIS and NIST. Within seconds, you'll have policy information and mappings across the entire Microsoft 365 suite in a single platform here that you can navigate. And within our baselines, we've recently mapped to the foundations benchmark from CIS. You can now see all of these controls with automated pass fail evidence and evidence collection with full remediation steps for each control. So if this looks interesting and you want to run a free scan on your environment or a client environment, head over to cloudcapsule.io and run a free assessment today. Shifting into Outlook here, this first one's related to iOS and Android. This is a moving of the send button. I feel like a lot of people have been um, doing accidental sends and they're moving it to the top of the page now instead of the bottom of the page to help reduce the accidental send. This will happen in September 2025 and be complete by early March. Another one for Outlook Mobile here is extending the existing DOP policy tips and enforcement that you see today if you're enforcing those in Outlook on the web or the local Outlook client into the mobile experience as well too. So you get security win, especially if you're doing that for data loss prevention. This will happen early August and be complete by early September. Next one here is Microsoft's ever ongoing effort to make the new Outlook experience much like the classic Outlook experience where they're giving you now the ability to create and save email templates, which we did have in classic Outlook, have not had up to this point in time in new Outlook. Timelines on this one will be early October and be complete by late November. Shifting into Microsoft Intune here, a lot of great announcements. First off is app control with new targeting capabilities. App control is the evolution of what was previously WDAC for application control on workstations. Previously, you were only able to scope this to the entire organization. With this announcement, that's now GA, you're able to target specific groups. Next one here is also Windows Autopilot patching devices during setup. So this is a great security win, also great for the end user experience where they will go ahead and go through the patching experience as part of onboarding versus going through all of onboarding and then having to go through the update cycle afterwards or worse. Um, having a device that isn't quite patched all the way. Next one here is also related to some additional RBAC capabilities that you have, you know, within RBAC for various types of actions that can be taken, such as, you know, wiping a device, retiring a device. Largely, if you're a CSP using GDAP, you can control this through some of the GDAP permissions. But this is giving you even further granular control, especially if you're just, you know, an organization with an IT department here. And you can see that some of those options here as far as the policy types in the screenshot. This is GA today also. We're shifting into the admin section here. This first one's related to Defender for Identity. This is specifically if you're running a hybrid environment and you have your local Active Directory extended with Entra Connect into the cloud. These are two new Microsoft Secure Score improvement actions about removing inactive service accounts. This is again locally. 
and then removing discovered passwords and Active Directory account attributes. So two great security wins here. Timelines on this one's in mid-September and be complete by late October. Next one here is related to Microsoft Teams integration with Defender and extending the allow block list for blocking domains into the Defender Admin Center in lieu of it being in the Teams Admin Center, which makes a whole lot of sense. I hope they continue to consolidate all the security functions into the Defender Admin Portal so we don't have to pop into the Teams Admin Center for those as well. This will happen mid-September, be complete by late September. Next one here is for admin capabilities of restricting new file creation in Office desktop apps to cloud locations. So this would prevent users from creating new documents locally or on their desktop, as an example, which I think is a great win. We would want users to be saving documents in their OneDrive and SharePoint, not only for restoration purposes, if they ever had their laptop lost or stolen, uh, but also just for security, you know, the protections that we would have, the data loss prevention concepts, things like that. This will happen mid-September and be complete by late September. And then the next one here is also related to Defender and Exchange Online, where you can now temporarily restore items that were deleted that were in quarantine view, but still exist in the system. I don't know how much this comes up. I haven't heard it a ton, but it's another nice to have capability in case the quarantine view gets deleted and you need to restore that email for a user. This will happen mid-August, be complete by mid-September. And then the very last one here is the introduction of the product offering for Windows 10 extended security updates or ESUs in CSP, which will start on September 1st. So as you know, Windows 10 security is going end of support in the October timeframe. So we'll be able to start purchasing these um, extended security units for one, two, or three years. You can get them directly from Microsoft if you purchase direct or through your CSP distributor, such as Pax8. Next one up here is related to GPT-5 in Microsoft Copilot. Specifically, this is for users who are purchasing licensing with Copilot, not the free version of this, and it will extend into Copilot Studio as well too. So this will be something you can select as the model that it's going to be using. There's some users that will already have it available today and it will extend into all tenants in the next com coming weeks here, which at the time of this announcement, by the time you're watching this video, should be available if you're purchasing Copilot today. Next one here is interesting. It's giving users the ability to see uh, recent activity in Word as a dynamic document snapshot. It's kind of extending some SAS capabilities into what previously was kind of a dry Word document. You can see that here in the screenshot with things like who's edited this, who's commented on this, who's last updated or visited this document since the last time you were here, which is pretty cool. This will happen late July and be complete by late August. Next one here is for Microsoft Outlook, which is this enhanced search experience. So when a user goes in and types something in the search box, Copilot will pop up and also do a more thorough analysis on the side pane here that looks through other email messages, Teams messages, and documents to help them summarize you know, the most relevant information. This will happen early September, be complete by late September. Next one here is related to consumers adopting the free version of Microsoft Copilot. They're adding more features for you to consume for free, which is always a great thing. Um, specifically, this is around images and, and edit visual content, such as poster, banner, infographic, and images. So a lot of the Dolly you know, components in here um, that are nice to have without needing to have an actual license. This will happen mid-August and it's expected to be complete in the coming weeks. By the time you're watching this video, it might be already available for you to go check out. Next one here is another cool feature if you're using a SharePoint agent. This does require you know, the paid version of Copilot, but this is basically allowing you to at mention the agent within Teams without having to leave. And then it can basically source or query the knowledge base in the document repository of that SharePoint site to respond to you there. So I have in late August and be complete by mid-September. Last one here is more of a security productivity announcement just related to the default settings that will come out. Um, this is specifically around Teams meetings where Teams Copilot without transcription will be the default with this, which I'm not a huge fan of because other tools that use AI like Zoom, as an example, do allow you to set auto recording and transcription by default versus here, we have to manually set that if we wanna capture those recordings and insights, but it does allow you to you interact with Copilot in the meeting. You can just not get the summary afterwards because the transcript's not being recorded. So up in mid-September and be complete by late September. Okay hey guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with any of these features you're most excited about. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to see these update videos each month. And be sure to check out Cloud Capsule to run a free assessment on one of your tenants. And if you haven't done so already, to see where your security posture is at today. I'll see you guys next week.